Hello, I'm a Nostalgia Critic Guy. Remember it so you don't have to. If there's ever been a decade-spanning franchise that's just warmed its way into our hearts, it would have to be Alvin and the Chipmunks. Though not for me, I thought they were creepy rodent people. And if you're wondering why I'm in a totally different location this weekend, it's because I'm at UBCon, hiding from my denizens of fans. Well, I'm hiding from my mini-fans also. <laughs> what are you talking about? You don't have any fans. I do too. I'm one of the most known of female reviewers on the whole internet. Oh, please. Your audience is, like, really tiny. It's, it, it, this is your audience right here. Well, I bet on my film academia record that I never mentioned because I'm really modest, I cannot review you! Oh, yeah? Yeah! Oh, yeah? Yeah! Wanna sing about it? God, no, that'd be silly and pointless. So in the 50s, there was this guy named Ross Baggins... 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 I'm calling him Tony, who got famous with the annoyingly catchy novelty song, Witch Doctor. After he found that speeding up the tape made his voice sound squeaky. <laughs> turned out so well for him that he decided he should create characters around those irritatingly high-pitched voices. And so in 1958, we got Alvin, Simon, Theodore, and their very pissed off... Foster father? Abusive manager? Don't know... Played by Bag... himself under the stage name of Dave Seville. The Chipmunk TV show was like a lot of 80s cartoons. It existed to sell merchandise, in this case, novelty records, a sort of, uh, proto-kids bop. They had only existed in musical form for decades before the Saturday Morning cartoon, which debuted in 1983, and eventually in animated feature film form in 1987. Not to be confused, of course, with the much less effort forth putting live-action films that came out 20 years later. The Chipmunk Adventure was sort of this culmination of the era of Alvin, sort of a around the world in 80 minutes sort of thing. With a girls versus boys thing. Dave, who used to be the constantly angry guy, is now in this movie a ballsless put upon dorka schmuck. Dave and your jacket! And your tickets! And your pants! Alvin is jealous that Dave is going on a business trip to Europe to do. business. Calvin, for the last time, this is strictly a business trip. It's I have to go on business to business land. But after Dave leaves, Alvin, yearning to see the world, gets caught up in some jewelry smuggling scheme by these people while at an arcade. The common hangout for criminal aristocrats. But the bots are winning! Girls are winning? Unacceptable! Now, the chipmunks and their adventures are silly but fun, but the bad guys are by far the worst part of this movie. Just look at the animator's misguided attempt to make them look realistic. All of the realistic human animation in this movie is kind of grotesque, even Dave with his Bob Saggity face. The two bad guys are a European of some kind of clown who looks like Paris Hilton in 30 years, and her lover, Klaus. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? Uh, they're brother and sister. Ooh! They're quite wealthy, and very bored. So the two bad guys are diamond smugglers, apparently, and they come up with the world's stupidest plan to sell their jewels across the world. I'd race you around the world right now! <gasps> These pop stars over here are perfect mules for our drug cartel. And only Simon, the whiny, conscientious objector, suspects that something might be fishy, but goes along with it anyway. Mr. Mm. Burstein, I beg you to call this off. Alvin is a cocky prick, Simon is smart, but would rather bitch from the back than actually do anything, and Theodore likes to eat. <laughs> He's fat! The chipmunks, on the other hand, why bother? I mean, they are fundamentally identical to Alvin and the Chipmunks. I guess you could argue that Jeanette had a little bit less personality than Simon, but other than that, they are identical. Well, they had a gender war. You'd never beat me if this were for real. Oh, is that so? Yeah, we can out rock and roll you. The Chipettes were introduced in 1983 in the first episode of the Chipmunks' new TV show. 
The chipmunks up until this point mostly existed on record, not TV, and the Bagdasarians wanted to cover a wider range of songs, specifically female ones. Hell, even with Babs and Buster Bunny, there were some differences in these unique identities, but here, nothing. It's just the chipmunks, except they're a little girlier. We've got to keep these two apart. So, the chipettes were created to sing, not to be character foils to the chipmunks, which, uh, will explain a lot. I guess a competition between the two would definitively settle the boys versus girls debate as the fact that one side is boys and the other side is girls is their only point of difference. That and the fact that the chipettes have clothes that fit. The chipmunks get out from under the watchful eye of their babysitter, who I'm pretty sure is supposed to be a drag queen, by taking some of Dave's words and editing it for the babysitter. Hello, Miss Miller. I want Alvin, Simon, and Theodore to meet me in Europe. Bye bye. Meet me in Europe City, the capital of Europe. David. Are you drunk? So this is all the chipmunks need to set off on the round the world adventure. All except for Simon. Please reconsider. Tell somebody! Go to the police! Go around and alert somebody instead of just whining about you half a race rescue ranger! This is a brilliant plan. An utterly brilliant plan. Quick. Give a bunch of child chipmunks hot air balloons and diamonds, and let's choose the slowest travel method available. They might as well be walking on their hands. Jamal will never suspect them in a million years. <laughs> no one will catch a diamond cartel if it's in a hot air balloon mulled by chipmunks. For the last time, Eleanor, there is no hurricane. Well, uh, how about that hurricane over there? And the rest of the movie is vignette little scenes where the two groups are in different countries, having different adventures, the girls starting off uh, scuba diving and being chased by a shark. Whoa, she's like a dolphin. Whoa, holy shit! She's got some impressive leg strength. And the boy is starting off in Mexico. This can only lead to good things. It is our annual fiesta! <laughs> This looks like part of an amusement park, like Epcot's enchanted ethnic stereotype. I'll have two cheese enchiladas with extra sauce, a tostada grande. <laughs> He's fat! And stupid. Wow, quite an elaborate operation these not drug lords have going on. Oh, and they're also being pursued by some bad guys who want the diamonds for never disclosed reasons. And I think some of them might actually be good guys working for the feds. Okay, seriously, you can't catch three tiny rats on a slow-moving hot air balloon? I think real chipmunks will be harder to catch! Is Theodore ever going to eat? <laughs> it's a spoiled brat, get wet. <laughs> this is almost racist against whatever these people are. Are you uh, sure they're brother and sister? They are brother and sister. Well, I don't think they are. They are. I don't think they are! They are! Wanna sing about it? No! I came prepared. Meanwhile, the chipmunks and chipettes only run into each other once. This being in Greece, to do that musical number, we almost keep parodying in this review. Oh, what are you doing here? You do realize that there are more apples, right? Like, right there. Bunch of apples. How much you wanna bet we can out rock and roll you? You know, Alvin, at least the chipettes don't wear body length turtlenecks. Oh, and Dave's there too. Dave's fifth month abroad. Hey, that looks like my boy! I guess it could be another trio of male adolescent rodent like abominations? To the movie's credit, at least it's not a jukebox musical. And this is by no means a bad song. This was originally written by Terry Shattuck, who wrote Olivia Newton-John's Physical. Yeah, this almost sounds like a real song. I can totally imagine a real singer performing this instead of a bunch of cartoon gerbils. Thing is, this song wasn't actually originally written for this movie. It was written for a low-budget feature called Malibu Bikini Shop, which is about exactly what you think it is. Turtles. The radio blasts 
I, I feel like this scene sort of undercuts the message of this song. <laughs> Well, to be fair, there is a lot of chipmunk near nudity in the chipmunk adventure. Chipmunk in bikini, chipmunk in sexy harem outfit, chipmunk panty shots, chipmunks in loincloths. These people. <laughs> it's not until the girls float over into, uh, Indigitistan that we cross the line from sort of uncomfortable stereotyping into actual ethnic stereotyping. In ten years, I will make her! One of my wives. I will marry that chipmunk. I will have her as one of my mini wives. Oh, but wait till you see what he gets Brittany for incentive. <laughs> that is a guilt gift. <laughs> At least they let you keep one thing, little penguin. I got that picture took with my penguin family at Penguin Sears. Well, the girls decide, obviously, to steal back their dolls, which are being guarded by... Uh, cobras, and get the hell out of Dodge. Oh, but wait till you see what the solution is. Oh god, they're not gonna sing again, are they? No. Worse. They're gonna seduce them... with song. Just like we could do right- NO! Don't solve your problems this way, you don't sing, it's not reality! Yes, here we have our Egyptian theme song. Egyptian themed? Sounds like a karaoke version of a country Elvis song from the 70s. Tell me what I need to do to get lucky with you. Should we even begin to explore the Freudian significance of a bunch of prepubescent girls in sexy harem outfits singing a song called Getting Lucky to Snakes? Not if you want to get any ads on this video. Where's Eleanor during all this? I don't know, eating? Oh, there she is. I guess she was eating the whole time. Nope, that's actually the penguin with the Sears portrait in a heart locket. And the Chipettes decide to potentially forfeit the race to save the penguin. How do we get to Antarctica? Antarctica? How big could that be? Yeah, I like how the girls have the nurturing subplot and the boys have the forced slavery subplot. This plot twist makes the bad guys think the Chipettes have figured out their obvious, 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 completely flawed scheme. One of the dolls rip and they see some of the diamonds. But that could have happened at any time. Regardless, Claudia and Klaus send their goons after the Chipettes, but they are no match for... The Penguins! And then, the slaughter began. The Penguins feasted well that night. Meanwhile, the Chipmunks... Uh, wait a minute, where the hell are they? Cambodia? Borneo? South America? The Congo? WHERE?! Oh no, that means late 80s native tribes! Nothing but good things can happen here. I'm sure it will be nothing but respectful. <laughs> See pretty clothes? Merchandise! Oh my god, that guy's man titties. Animators, why? I demand to know, why this artistic choice? Is that a dude or a chick? And if it's a dude, why are his movies so saggy? Did he just lose a lot of weight? This can only end well with human sa I mean, uh, chipmunk sacrifice. Fortunately, the much less inept chipettes show up in the nick of time to save them. How the hell do the chipettes know where they are? I don't even know where they are. I have no clue where the heck they could be. I've narrowed it down hey, to three continents. Why don't we go for some acceptable targets. You know, we get some Germans in there, make fun of the Lederhosen and the, or the French and the Berets. We could go to New Jersey and make fun of the orange skin and the Bumpets. We don't need to be in wherever they are. I feel like the Chipmunk Adventure was meant to be longer, you know? So many places left unvisited. So many cultures left uninsulted. Where's the writer of North when you need him? We just knew where you'd be! Thank God you had your GPS on you! Wasn't this before GPS? <laughs> Thankfully, we're spared a You're just saying that to keep us from winning the race speech. As the chipmunks and the chipettes immediately join forces against the sprocken sie malice that is Klaus und Claudia. Wow, European Airlines produces a lot of garbage. It gets very quickly resolved by Mrs. Miller's incompetent driving and the fact that the kids always wear a seatbelt. Hey, what about my hundred thousand bucks? Your hundred thousand? We won the race! 
Uh, yeah, they had to save your life. They pretty definitively won the race. And as the kids gain nothing but hearty life experience from which they will presumably learn nothing, the movie ends on a note of impotent rage. So that's the chipmunk adventure! It's funny, cause Girls of Rock and Roll represents everything the movie does right, and something like Wooly Bully represents everything that the movie does wrong. Racist natives, shoehorn musical numbers completely irrelevant to the plot and even to its own scene. Like the new movies, The Chipmunk Adventure suffers from lack of focus. Is it about international jewel smuggling, chipmunks versus chip bats, travelogue of various countries, getting a kidnapped penguin back to Antarctica City, nor do Alvin and Simon ever have to apologize for not taking him seriously and denying him delicious ethnic foods. But most relevant, the whole battle of the sexes thing never really comes to any conclusion. It's just Alvin is still bitching about it by the end of the movie. But more importantly, does the battle of the sexes thing apply to us? Does it? I think at first, but since we don't really have the same corporate oversight that products like these have, they moved more organically towards being more realistic. The Chipettes were just a total demographic move. Um, so was Nostalgia Chick. Okay, in that way it's a very similar business move, but our differences don't necessarily have to do with our genders. We are different people with different methods of analysis regardless of gender, background, or education level. Wow, Critic, it's almost like I wrote this. So Nostalgia Chick was born from the idea of a gender-specific spin-off to look at gender-specific shows that I myself did not feel equipped to look at. But the thing is, you were intended to be just like the Chip Bats and identical to me. And then you went rogue, and I'm kicking myself in the ass for hiring you every day. Exactly. And then you stopped answering calls and wouldn't answer our emails about what you should be doing. Yep. And having another contest would simply make us look bad. Uh-huh. So here we are. Here we are. Also, Alvin, yes, you lost the race. No, I didn't! I'm sorry, I, I can say all this other bullshit in your script, but he did not lose that race! Uh, yeah, he did. No, he didn't! Yeah, he did! No, he didn't! Yes, he did! You wanna sing about it? Yes, I do! They say there are no girls on the internet And then they try to troll us We know that we're better Every time that they rickroll us I'm a girl reviewer on the internet Oh, I'm a guy reviewer on the internet Our packages, packages are, are different, different but our jobs are the same Time to put on the boys versus, versus girls on the shade Yeah! Yeah, that was lame. Well, at least it rhymes. I'm the one that wrote it. You didn't even write it. Well, that explains why it sucks. Ugh, come on, let's outline how boys are different from girls. Okay. I like apple martinis. Well, I like beer. I'm less prone to color blindness over here. My upper body strength is really something to see. Hemophilia is really, really rare for me. I've got boobs. Well, I got boobs and no one's pressuring me to wax my pubes. I smell like flowers in the spring. Well, I got a penis. My linguistic skills are adroit and refined. Well, I don't know what that means. I live on average two years longer than you. Still got that. Emotional and more intuitive. Well, you suck at that. I'm more prone to depression and also distress. I will never, ever, ever have PMS. I'm a girl reviewer on the internet. Well, I'm a guy reviewer on the internet. Our, our parts, parts are different, different but our jobs are the same. Time to put other boys versus girls on the shame. shame. Well, we've struggled for thousands of years to overcome our form of this oppression and break through the glass ceiling, and we've sweat and blood to get out of the kitchen and get a goddamn career and contribute to society on an intellectual and emotional level, and we still only really make 75 cents on the dollar compared to men! Still got
家在拼呢。